happy Monday. I can't believe it's Monday already. Um, this weekend has gone so quickly for me. And yes, all I've done is drink wine and eat a lot of food. So I'm really excited to kind of be back and having a quick chat because today is all about how getting clear on what you actually want helps you make more sales. Um, now it seems like a really simple topic because it's actually one that we see posted about in Facebook groups all the time. So I'm going to try and touch on it from a slightly different angle because recently I've had a lot of questions from people who want to make more sales. And so they will come to me and they'll say, okay, great. I want to sell more stuff. And I'm like, okay, awesome. Two main questions. Who are you selling to? And what are you trying to sell to them? Now, these questions aren't designed to stump anybody, but they do every single time. Because typically when we go into selling or the sales process, we don't actually know necessarily who our ideal client is or what it is that we're trying to sell to them. And so as an online entrepreneur, as a coach specifically, it can be really, really challenging to know who you're selling to and know what you're selling to them. The reason being that actually what tends to happen is we worry so much about getting clients that instead of focusing on what we're really good at in our one area of expertise, we start to think, okay, I, I really want that person to buy from me. I really like that person and I really think I could help them. And you start to actually tailor your offerings around them. Now, that's not a bad thing. And in every coaching business, you're going to have clients that need different services, that need different levels of support, and that's perfectly natural. But actually, when it comes to sales, you have to be really specific about what you're offering and who you're offering that to. So I just wanted to kind of drop in today and find out who actually knows who their ideal client is and what they're selling to them. And if you don't have an idea on either of those, then it's something you definitely need to work out, work out what it is that those people um, who you are looking at talking to, what it is that they want from you? What will they actually buy from you? And more importantly, what will they not buy from you? So for example, if you're a VA, you probably don't want to be selling people coaching services unless you're talking to other VAs who want to learn how to build a successful VA business. If you are a health coach and you are trying to, hey, Danielle, <laughs> um, if you're a health coach and you are trying to sell health coaching services, what would your clients not buy from you? Well, they're probably not going to buy a recipe book, which is full of chocolate cake recipes, you know, so it's being smart and, and practicing some common sense. Hey, Matthew. <laughs> it's so early where you guys are. I can't believe that you're on Facebook Live. Woohoo, happy Monday. Um, but yes, yeah, so the important thing is that you actually have an idea of who you're talking to and what it is that you want to sell them. So when you're thinking about your packages today or when you're thinking about your sales calls or when you're thinking about the posts that you're putting out, social media, um, external publications, whatever it might be, just think about who you really want to talk to and what your ideal client looks like. So if you're looking for somebody that is happy to pay you for your services and that isn't going to negotiate or isn't um, probably financially insecure or unstable, then you need to be talking to people in that language. So saying, you know, the people that I want to work with are making 500 to a thousand dollars every month consistently in their business. Or you need to be saying to people, I'm looking for women who are looking to lose weight by a specific time so that you can come and join this group program and really see massive results. And then you need to be really clear on what it is that you're actually offering because otherwise we can get a bit lost in these fancy long sales pages which don't really tell us what it is that we need to know. So think about what it is that you are actually selling. Are you selling weekly calls? Are you selling bigger benefits? You know, are you selling them buying into a larger community? Are you selling them getting networking referrals through working with you? Are you selling different Skype calls each week or audio series or different email support? Just really think about it and lay it clear on the line to your potential clients what it is that you're willing to give them, what it is that you want them to buy and make it really easy for them to pay you. So if you're on your website and you know that actually your ideal client probably isn't going to read six pages of text, then make a video. 
make a video sales page. Make it easy for them to make the decision and buy from you in a really simple, really easy and really authentic way. Does anybody have any questions? I'm like here and kind of chilling out with my water. I think I'm about to cough and potentially die. So I'm just gonna have a sip of this. If anybody's got any questions, just shoot them in the comments and I'm happy to answer them. Mm. While I'm on my Facebook Live binge week, um, which is quite exciting really. Um, I think I'm getting everybody that I know into Facebook Live. <laughs> so if you are not doing Facebook Live yet, then you should be. Um, so make sure you get on it. Okay, awesome. Doesn't look like there's any questions. If there are any questions after I finish going live, put them in the comments and I will be back later. I'll probably do another Facebook Live thing. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Typically, as I'm about to leave, Danielle pops up. Um, great question. So when potential clients lead with, I can't afford your service. Awesome. So potential clients, um, they will, <laughs> this is a really interesting one. I'm going to answer it in two parts. So why would somebody not buy your service? Okay, let's just think about that for a second. There are three reasons typically that people won't buy your services. And this is gonna sound a little bit harsh, but I promise you it's true. Either they don't know you yet, they, um, and therefore they don't kind of trust you yet. They haven't been reassured on what your product or service will do for them just yet. Or they actually can't afford your services. Okay, and that typically is how that conversation tends to go. And so what you need to do with the people who lead with, I can't afford your services, is think about two things. Are they your ideal client? Because if your ideal client is somebody, for example, who, um, if we're talking about my ideal client, my ideal client wants to make more sales in their business. They see sales coaching as an investment into their business because they know it's going to get them a very clear return. So if your ideal client is somebody who really wants to invest in themselves, then but leads with, um, I can't afford your services, then think about asking them around that question, being very open around whether it is they actually can't afford it or whether they don't see the benefit and value of what it will add to them right then and there and whether that justifies the cost of what it is that you're actually selling. Uh, okay, fine. When they ask if they should get on the call with you, if they can't afford it, what do you do? Quite simply, if somebody says they can't afford my services, and generally this doesn't happen because I do a lot of pre-qualification. So what generally tends to happen in my sales process is that if somebody goes through my website and they book a discovery call with me, the discovery call questionnaire or the pre-questionnaire um, actually asks them, have you visited my programs and services page? And are you financially able to invest in yourself and your business at this time. So generally, if they answer no, doesn't mean that I won't get on the call with them, but it does mean that when I get on the call, I do outline this is not a free coaching session. Discovery sessions are an opportunity for us to discover if we're a good fit for each other. And it's for me to answer any questions that you might have, find out some more about your business. And if they then say, okay, I definitely can't afford your services, you can go, okay, that's not a problem. If it's something you'd like to explore, then we can talk about the payment plans and installment options that I have. If it's something that you really feel is out of your financial reach at this time, then my suggestion would be to go and check out some of my free resources and see whether any of those can help you get you where you need to be until a time when you are able to explore coaching with me one-on-one. -on -one. Or perhaps offering them into a group program or something that is slightly lower cost, but will give them the value that they need to explore coaching with you one-on-one -on -one later. Because we're not looking at everybody like a cash cow here. We, you know, I don't look at people in terms of pound signs. And I absolutely believe in helping as many people as possible. Unfortunately, love and fresh air doesn't pay my mortgage. Um, so what I do have to do sometimes is give people the best option and the best advice for them. And sometimes that means referring them to a group program, referring them to a free challenge that I might be running that might be helpful, or even just saying, you know what, this is not the right time for you to coach with me because I, I want to work with people who are totally happy with getting the return on their investment um, at this point in time. So why don't we check back in in two to three months and see where you stand then. That gives you a lot more honesty, integrity, and authenticity. And actually, when they do have the money, you'll be the first person they come back to. I'm really glad that helped. <laughs> Apparently, I have four people, five people here. Um, 
I'm really sorry if I haven't said hello to you. Facebook Live doesn't tell me who is actually on the call, so it's quite interesting. Unless you say hi, I can't see you. Um, just a little bit weird. I might write to Facebook and just be like, look, if you could just do that, that'd be great. But like I say, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. If you want to know how to get clear on what you're selling or how to get clear on how to sell to your ideal client or how to talk to your ideal client or how to find your ideal client in order to sell something to them, pop your questions in the comments. If you don't have any questions, that's totally fine. I'm sure I'll be back on Facebook Live later today having a chat about some other aspects of sales. So it's going to be cool. Um, I'm going to be using Facebook Live a lot as well. So if you're in the group and you don't like Facebook Live, then I'm really sorry. But I am going to write some posts as well. I'm not totally lazy. It's just that I much prefer video. Awesome. Okay, cool. I don't think there are any more questions. If there are, that's totally fine because I will answer them in the comments um, throughout the afternoon. Have a really, really good day and I will speak to you guys later on. See you later, lovelies.